Romans chapter 12. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray in the name of Jesus and thank you for your word. Thank you for your message. Thank you for this day and the days to come. We thank you for all of your people. We thank you for our loved ones and thank you for the angels above and thank you for watching over us and keeping us safe. Thank you for giving us a new mind and a new heart. And thank you for your your message and your word and your wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but ye be, un be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man to the measure of faith. Commentary, Oral Roberts, 36, 37, 38, chapter 12. Thirty-six. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the services, but by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living, living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. When the apostle Paul first advanced the truth of man's power. Who changed his, his own life by surrendering his mind to God, he approached the subject with, with a plea which is probably the strongest and most impassioned ever made to man. We approach you with the same earnest plea. Upon your knowledge of mercies of God and then the truth that is and that God is a good God, we beseech you to rid your mind of all that is negative unbelieving. With complete surrender to God's will for you, approach the subject with an open mind so that God can speak to you without having to go through the barriers of doubt and negative ideals which you have inherited or picked up along the way while associating with people of little faith. 37, uh, chapter 12, 2. And, he, and be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. To be transformed means to be made over, and how does it come about? Through, through the renewing or the changing of your mind by the new birth, John 3, 7. Being a Christian doesn't mean we have to leave this world We're in the world, but we're not part of it. You can be a businessman and look for Jesus to come. You can live a life in which you buy and sell and look for Jesus. You're looking for the soon coming Jesus has to do with your spirit. It is not a physical matter. 38. Chapter 12, 3. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to God, and hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. That night on the storm-tossed sea of Galilee, when the disciples awakened, awakened him and cried, Master, carest thou not that we perish? He awoke, stepped to the end of the boat, raised his hand, and said, Peace be still. When they reached shore, Jesus turned to the disciples and asked, Where is your faith? In other words, he was saying to them that they had faith. 
They had the same thing in their hearts that he had in his. Their faith could have stopped the storm just as his faith stopped it. And had they exercised their faith, I believe that everyone has faith. But not everyone directs his believing towards God. For instance, one person may put his faith in himself and his own ability. Another person may direct his faith toward money and what it will give him. Still, another may put his faith in a career outside of God's will. All are putting their faith in something other than God. It is misdirected faith. Our faith is God-given and God will hold every man responsible for how he has used this greatest of all powers. The power of the human being is to believe. The highest purpose of faith is that God be directed to God through Jesus Christ. God has placed faith in each of us, but it must be brought forth, the Bible says. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 12. In a sense, you hear the word of God as you read it. However, nothing can take the place of hearing it preached under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. As an anointed minister preaches the word of God, which is quick and powerful, at the same time, it reaches into the innermost parts of our being and there discovers our faith. The word enables our faith to, re to, re to rise and to take wings. Suddenly, we are possessed with a magnificent fighting force that calls, calls our faith. When we find it difficult to believe right, which is faith, we should say, Lord, help thine, thou mine, unbelief. Then we use every ounce of strength, every faculty of our mind, and every power of our soul to believe right. It takes effort to believe right. When you go into a dark room, you have to turn on the light. The same is true with your faith. It is not something others can do for you. You must do it yourself. God has dealt to you a measure of faith. It is up to you whether or not to use it. We can use our faith to believe right. In the midst of life's problems, we can rise up and say, God is good. God loves. Loves me. God wants to help me. And I believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11.6 we use the same energy and effort in wrong believing as we do in right believing. The only difference in the direction of our believing takes. The only difference is the direction our believing takes. Wrong believing fills us with doubt and confusion. Right believing brings us deliverance. For as we, many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one one body in Christ, and every one members one and every one members one of another. Having the gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that ex Extortioneth on extortion. He that giveth, let him do it with his simplicity. He that ruleth, let with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abdore that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. No slot flow in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing in constant prayer, distributing the necess necessity of saints given to the hospitality. Hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. For the same mind toward another, mind not high things, but condescend to the men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. 
recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Commentary 39, Romans chapter 12. Fear of criticism is one of the worst fears we ha allow ourselves to develop. What people say about us is important. It is wrong, however, to make their opinion of us the determining factor in our happiness. A good policy, policy to follow when you are criticized is to ask yourself it is, if it is true. If it is, have the courage to change. If it isn't, if it's not true, take the criticism, put it in the hands of God, and leave it there. There is also a way to handle your critic. Neutralize him by forgiving him. Forgive him whether he asks you or not. That is what Jesus did. Father, forgive them, he saith, while hanging on the cross. For they know not what they do. Use the power of prayer. Put the critic in the hands of God who will deal with him and more with more kindness than you would and a lot more effectively instead of striking back have the good have the good, good grace to let god be the paymaster go on about the important business of living and believing right god will take care of your critics amen therefore if thine enemy hunger feed him he thirst, give him drink, for in doing so, thou shalt keep heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Pray to Jesus. Hallelujah.